Well, look, let's focus on the mandate on small businesses, businesses with 100 or more employees, because I think that the other measures that they took, certainly uh, the issues with the federal workforce, the mandates related to the federal workforce, and even the mandates on health care workers probably fall more squarely in the purview of what the federal government can do. I think the controversial part of this and the part that's going to get challenged is the mandate on businesses with 100 and more employees. So let's unpack that. Um, they have to go through a rulemaking process. OSHA has to issue a rule. Even if they do a direct-to-final rule, assuming OSHA hasn't started doing that yet, and I, I suspect they haven't, the White House probably announced this ahead of any rulemaking because they wouldn't have wanted it to leak, that's going to be a weeks-long process and perhaps a month-long month, month long process or longer. Even a direct-to-final rule, even an emergency rule, it's probably going to get challenged in court. And even if you're able to implement the rule, they're going to have to issue guidance on how businesses implement that and give some kind of grace period to get that into effect and then stand up an enforcement mechanism. So best case, as a practical measure, this is probably going to be a, a tool or a policy that affects the fall of 2022. <laughs> Certainly not going to be implemented in time for this Delta wave. Yeah. Um, by the summertime, I believe prevalence is going to decline, so we're not really going to be reaching for mandates. So this is probably something for the fall 2022 work season. Now, we've vaccinated 75 percent of adults over the age of 18. The administration has done a very good job getting this vaccine distributed. We're not going to get above 90 percent, even with this rulemaking. Um, so you can decide where you think we land. I think if we continue to chip away on our current trajectory, we probably would have gotten to 80 percent. Perhaps if this rule gets fully implemented, we'll get to 85 percent, maybe a little bit more. So we need to ask ourselves whether or not the benefits of trying to get that last 5 percent, many of which have probably been infected because they chose to go unvaccinated, whether the benefits of that um, are offset by the um, impact that this is going to have, the, the acrimony that it's going to create, the court challenges, the legal challenges. We need collective action. Uh, individual decisions here affect the community. But I think the focal point of that collective action should be as close to the community as possible. You know, individual school boards, businesses making decisions on their own, local mayors, maybe states. I think when the federal government starts to get involved in this, you take something that's furtively political and make it objectively political. You know, my, my thought was that this is all too late anyway. I, I mean, even the other measures, even if people were to implement these measures today, trying to get testing in the schools, trying to get people vaccinated, it, it would take months to implement. And that means it's probably too late for most of our kids because this is going to burn through the kids in the meantime. So this is a lot of sound and a lot of fury and not necessarily anything that's going to keep my kids safe. None of this is going to really impact this Delta wave. This Delta wave played out in the South, by and large, is going to play out now in the North, and it's already um, sweeping through, starting to sweep through schools. I think the one thing you could do to impact the overall risk of the U.S. population is get a vaccine made available to children. A lot of people yeah. who have residual anxiety about COVID who are now vaccinated have anxiety because their kids are unvaccinated and they're worried about bringing the infection back into the house. And I think that that's also creating a lot of anxiety about going back into the office. You don't want to bring the infection into a home where there's vulnerable children. So that is probably the single most impactful measure we can take. And frankly, a lot of the remaining unvaccinated people are now children. Adults right. are getting vaccinated. As I said, 85, 75 percent over the age of 18 have at least one dose. Most of them will complete the series. But there's 50 million kids who are age 12 and under. <laughs> There's nothing available to them. There are now 25 percent of the cases that are that are out there. Hospitalizations are up with those children. So, again, a whole lot of sound, a whole lot of fury. There's going to be a lot of anger and back and forth and arguing over this. And it's still not going to keep my kids safe. Right. And the one thing we can do, the, the single best thing we can do to keep kids safe right now is control the infection in adults. There's a lot of literature that when infection levels go down the adult population, it goes down the, the children as well. But the collision of back to school, uh, back to work post Labor Day and Delta continuing to spread in the U.S., I think, is going to create a challenging situation in school. The thing that they could implement quickly, which they did announce yesterday, is giving a nudge to schools to implement testing. I still believe that if schools either. implemented I mean, regular testing, I, I agree. But there's turnkey I, solutions that could be stood up. But but there is in public schools. I'm told that in public schools, you can't require kids to even test as a condition for them going to school. So it's voluntary, and the people who go along with voluntary guidelines are the same ones who will mask and try and behave protectively anyway. And the ones who won't are the ones who aren't following any of the rules to begin with. So I don't know what good that does either. Yeah, well, they've rolled out testing and they implement test-to-stay parameters to try to use testing to keep kids in the schools and avoid large quarantines when a case is identified. You get pretty good compliance. So I th it depends on where you are, but I think you could use testing 
more effectively in the schools. A lot of schools aren't doing that, not because of the logistical issues. There's turnkey solutions available to the districts, but because they're reluctant to turn over positive cases in the school setting and have to deal with the politics of that. So I think that there's still opportunities to use that and keep kids in defined social pies. Those are the two most impactful tools. Some schools still aren't doing that, uh, even in, you know, the Northeast, where I think that there's more measures overall. You still see school districts being a little bit cavalier about the risk of Delta spread within the classroom.